on today's episode of Everyday Life with Becca. Hello everybody. So I'm back filming with my GoPro because it's got a nice wide angle lens. And as you can see, it might be premature to some of you, but I'm getting in the Halloween vibe. It's almost September, so you know, you can't blame me, really. At this time of the year, when, okay, it's been sunny and it's been warm today, but having said that, there is a little nip in the air. And even though today has been nice and sunny and gorgeous, it just has that feel about it. And I know some people will be saying, oh, it's still summer, it's still summer, Becca. But we're getting to the tail end now. Um, and around this time of year, I start getting a little bit of a buzz. In case you didn't know, I absolutely love Halloween and the winter months. Cozy nights in, cozy candles, cozy everything. And as we tail off into the end of August, and I know August and September can be really nice and hot, but I'm kind of like, mm, I'm kind of like over summer. Not that we've had a summer in the UK. We really haven't. It's been absolutely appalling. Um, so... But I really do look forward to the the winter months. Um, I guess that's because I was a December baby, or am a December baby, um, that I prefer the dark nights. I really do prefer the dark nights. Um, and I think that's probably something to do with feeling kind of insulated and safe when it gets dark early plus the other bonus to it is that i can take louis and mabel out under the cover of darkness so if they kick off in front of another dog i don't feel humiliated in front of the owner because i can kind of just like scurry on by and um under the cover of darkness and you know it doesn't bother me i just think well whatever you know so i think there is that but also i love the way that the earth feels the smell um as the leaves start to fall and all those kinds of things i just love i'm not a a huge fan of Christmas anymore. Um, I just prefer the darker half of, you know, the run up to Halloween. Um, there's so, you know, Christmas goes on forever. It, it kind of starts as soon as September hits, then Christmas stuff starts coming in the shops and everything. Whereas Halloween, we only kind of just get October and then it's all over you know the even before halloween has arrived the any the small amount of decorations in the uk have are already being pushed aside making way for christmas stuff and we haven't even reached october the 31st yet so that's a little bit of pet peeve of mine so i sort out my um fleece and i thought you know what i can hang this over my um headboard and that will make a nice little backdrop plus the fact i have my um oh salt lamp it's my gray salt lamp but also i've got my fairy lights there in the back i have had them before but i've kind of been further over this way in the bed so you won't necessarily have seen them so yeah 
I've been watching on YouTube. I don't know if any of you are into like ghosty things. And I know I mentioned this, this YouTube channel in my recent top 25 YouTube channels that I love to watch. And they are a duo called Ghost Theory. And I am absolutely hooked, mainly because, you know, you get a lot of these channels and um, they're either screaming and running around or it's obviously fake stuff. You don't get that with these, these two. Um, they will quite happily show you just sitting quietly in a space waiting to see if something happens. They're not in it to kind of sensationalize. They're there to do a proper investigation, which I feel gets lost in a lot of, um, a lot of these types of channels. If I have the energy and also somebody that would go with me, um, I would love to do that, to go to abandoned places and um, do ghost investigation. It doesn't take a huge amount of effort. You can I can sit on a chair or whatever and yeah, but I would love to do that, go to abandoned places and explore. I love, I really love when I see these videos of a, a an abandoned house with everything left behind, absolutely everything, just like they got up one day, walked out the door, never came back and everything was just left and I always wonder you know even with like things like the last lot of washing up that they did on the drainer in the sink a washcloth over the sink in the bathroom it's literally like if there was a zombie apocalypse or humanity became extinct overnight some of these places look exactly how they would without human interference where nature has started to come in and reclaim the surrounding area where you know ivy has started coming through windows and um gardens are completely overgrown but inside there's just like this tiny capsule of where a human used to be and I often look at these places, there's personal things like um, photographs and important documents just left lying around, covered in decay and dust and, you know, and I think to myself, well, this is somebody's life. Why isn't there anybody that would come in and claim these things? Plus, why would anybody leave some of these beautiful places? Some of them more elaborate than others, but some of them are just like modest little homes um, that you wouldn't even know was there because the place is so overgrown, the surrounding area is so overgrown that um, you wouldn't know it was there unless you found it and went looking for it. So I often wonder why hasn't anybody claimed it? Why haven't they claimed it? And why just leave a perfectly good home to rot? So I always find that very sad, but the saddest part is when you look around and you see somebody's life possessions um, holiday photographs, um, book collections, anything and everything that their life consisted of kind of just left because they've departed ship, you know, they've sailed on to wherever it, 
you might believe. Um, but I do, I, f I always find that desperately sad. And I think to myself, I wonder what will happen to my stuff. Will one day there be explorers um, poking around this place and thinking, Oh, look what she, she liked this and they, they like that. And it's just like they've just walked out the door and never come back. And it kind of makes you sort of evaluate your, um, you know, what is it all for? What is stuff all for? It's just things at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, things that all get left behind. Things that you might have treasured all your life. And then one day, they're just left. Nobody knows the story behind them. Nobody knows how much those things were loved or what they meant to the person. They're just an object that somebody might pick up and think, ooh, that's ugly. But to the person that owned it, it was part of a treasured memory. It's like, have you ever looked in um, a goodwill shop or charity shop, as we call them in the UK? And sometimes there will be a photo frame with a photo still in it. Um, but it's there because the frame is for sale. And I often look at the pictures in there and think, why didn't anybody want that photograph? And there it is, a person that had a life and was, was somebody's loved one, ends up in a charity shop with somebody that's just going to take that picture out when they get home because they've only brought the frame and throw it in the bin. And I think to myself, well, who put that photo frame in a charity shop and left the picture in and didn't want to take it with them? You know, and you hear of house clearances when somebody dies. And, um a relative or whatever that just wants the property sold as quick as possible will just, and they don't want anything in there and they might take a couple of things that are valuable probably. And then they'll get a house clearance company. They'll just come in and they'll clear the whole lot and get rid of it, send it, you know, to various places or what, whatever, but just clear it out so the property can be sold. And so, how have I got here from talking about Halloween? Oh, ghosts, that's right. And ghost exploring and the, um, yeah, that's how I got there. How I'd love to go exploring abandoned places and doing ghost hunts and stuff like that. I really would. I love it. Um, but it does make you see that side of life where... Um, once that person's gone but then I think to myself well they're not going to care I'm not going to care just say you know I just say I died tomorrow and everything that's left here will yeah I'm not going to care what what happens to it you know that's down to the people that um who will be around when I pop off this mortal coil no I do um when that will be obviously in the long in the far distant future i hope um so i will just leave all this stuff and whoever wants it will take it and the stuff they don't want they'll probably send to a charity shop um so yeah 
I hope sometimes though that when these things are put in um, a charity shop and somebody buys them I know I've done this I got a couple of things that I bought from a really nice antique place in the town where I live it's now closed down which I was really sad about but I bought a candle holder lamp um, and it still had a tiny stub of an old candle in it when I bought it home um, and I often look at that and I treasure it and I think I wonder where you came from what your story is um, so I've bought things and picked things up in charity shops and taken them home and cherished them and you know loved them so there is that ability for them things to be bought and then loved by somebody else um but yeah that's how i got here ghost hunting halloween spooky cats and yeah my start it starts now the countdown starts now as far as i'm concerned that's it anyway my friends i think i've tortured you enough for today's episode so I will love you and leave you and hopefully I will see you all in the next one bye